Hi everyone, my name is Maha Bukharam. Uh, I'm going to be talking about an interesting graphical approach to the approximate neighbor's neighbor search. Um, specifically, I'm going to be talking about hierarchical navigable small world graphs. I'm going to be referencing the paper Efficient and Robust Approximate Nearest Neighbor Search Using Hierarchical Na Navigable Small World Graphs by Y.A. Malklov and D.A. Yishudin. So let's get started. First, let's see the practical applications of um, such approaches. So for example, you're creating a search engine and you have some images, documents, and audios that you want to be um, you want to be included in the search. So you transform them into embeddings and then vector representation, and then you then you map them into a graph. You do the same same thing to the query or the search that is being done, convert it into vector representation, have it mapped into the graph. So what you need are the relevant um, k nearest neighbors of that embedding to see what are the neighbors that are actually what are the documents or the data that do actually corresponds with the query and you can explain the search results. So yeah, and that's how you get results. So as you can guess, there are two things that are really important uh, in this process. The first is accuracy and efficiency, and the other is time efficiency. So that's why we are using approximate nearest neighbor search. And we're looking at different algorithms, different approaches to get the best accurate results in the least time possible. Let's talk a little bit about Skipless and then we'll move on towards the main approach. So in Skipless, we have a layer of elements, a linked list of elements, and we place it on the bottommost layer. And as we move forward, as we move to the higher layers, we reduce the number of elements and we make the connections longer. So essentially in the topmost layer, we'll have the least amount of elements and the longest links um, of the skip list. So when we want to search the skip list, first of all, we define what we're looking for. Then we start from the head of the first layer and we essentially search. If, for example, the number in this case, for example, one, it's less than five, we move forward and search the next element. If we land on an element that's greater than five, we moved on to the next layer. So for example, here we have one, we've seen the next element, it's null, we move on to the next layer. Here we have the next element as four, which is less than five. So we, we still move forward and we get six, which is greater than five. So we move on to the next layer. And we do this until we get either to the number or less than the number and keep on doing this. So here on the last layer, we get five. As you can probably guess, the um, complexity of this is logarithmic um, due to the number of layers and the number of elements. And let's next talk about the navigable small world graphs. These are just graphs with um, long range links and small range links. It uses the greedy search algorithm, greedy routing. Uh, for example, we have an entry point, searches the neighbors, and goes to the neighbor that is closest to the query, and keep on doing keeps on doing that until we get to the nearest neighbor. Yeah, but as you can probably guess, this suffers from polylogarithmic search complexity because we're searching multiple nodes um, multiple times. Um, it also suffers from early stopping. So for example, we have this entry point, it looks at the neighbors, the distance is greater than the query, than the entry point itself. So it says the entry point is the nearest neighbor, which is not true. So when we talk about small world graphs, we can convert them hierarchically. So for example, we have this small world graph, navigable small world graph, and we make it into the layer zero of our hierarchy. So we convert this into layer zero and we build layers on top of it. Each layer has less amount of nodes and longer connections. So generally longer connections are moving upwards and the number of connections decreases when moving upwards. Next I'm gonna talk about the single layer search in this case. 
For example, let's talk about layer two. First of all, we define an entry point into the layer um, that corresponds with the query queue. So we have an entry point, we look at the neighbors and we just um, select the neighbor that is closest to the query, which is B in this case. So this becomes our nearest neighbor. When moving to multiple layer search, we then use this node as an entry point to the next layer. So the layer two nearest neighbor becomes the entry point of layer one. And the nearest neighbor of layer one becomes the entry point of layer zero. And as last, you have the nearest elements, element or elements based on the value of k um, on the layer zero. So as you can guess, it takes less time. It produces relatively accurate results, at least in this case. Next, I'm gonna talk about the insertion and construction of this graph uh, or the graph approach. So for example, you have an HNSW, uh, sorry, an HNSW graph. Um, and we're going to look at how we have a query and how a query, a node that we're going to insert into this graph and how we can go about that. And this is an algorithm that I've taken from the paper. The previous algorithms I've also taken from the paper. So to get you to understand the algorithm a little better and give you a visual um, representation of how this works. So for example, in this case, we're going to take capital M, which is the number of established connections as M uh, as two. So what this means is that this node will have two connections in each layer where we're inserting it. Next, we have M max. M max is the number of maximum connections in each layer. And M max zero is the number of maximum connections in layer zero. We have EP, which is just the entry point into the graph. So here, as you can see, um, <laughs> it's behind my picture, but you can clearly see this is the entry point highlighted. Um, capital L is just the number of layers. So here, um, or the highest layer, which in this case is four. Uh, small L is actually chosen by um, probability calculation that we will discuss later on. Um, but this determines where the node will be inserted. And um, from that layer onwards to layer zero, that node is inserted on each layer. So for example, this is randomly calculated to two. So we're going to be inserting this node from layer two to layer zero. So let's talk about uh, the insertion algorithm on the layers where we're not inserting the query. And then we'll talk about insert, inserting the query on the rest of the layers. So on the layers that we're not really inserting the query in, we're just going to be using the search algorithm that we discussed before. So it just goes to the nearest neighbor. The nearest neighbor becomes the entry point of the next, la next layer. And then we search the nearest neighbor on that layer so on and so forth. So finally, we have a nearest, an entry point on layer two, and now we're going to be um, constructing the edges. So we know that capital M is two, meaning we need to have two connections. So this essentially means that our um, query, our, not our query point, but the new node is actually going to um, have two connections. That reminds me, I think I've been calling this the query, this is not the query, this is the new node. I want to just point that out, okay. <laughs> but anyways, um, so yeah, after that, we look at uh, layer two. We're going to move to the nearest neighbor. We have chosen two nearest neighbors, that they make equals to two, and we make edges towards the new node and those um, nearest neighbors. We then you choose the nearest neighbor and use that as an entry point to layer one. We make connections of the two nearest neighbors with the new node. But as you can see here, the entry point of layer one actually has four connections now. And M max was chosen as three. So we remove this connection. We do the same for layer zero. Now, as you can see, this entry point into layer zero has four connections, but um, as 
we already discussed the M max for this is four because we now consider M max zero. So we, this connection is possible. So we just leave it as that. So there are two approaches discussed in the paper for um, selecting neighbors. The first is the naive approach, the greedy method we've already discussed it. And um, in this case, um, B and C would be the nearest neighbors and a connection would be made towards them. But there's another approach that's discussed in this paper, which actually looks at the regions of um, the nodes that we're actually connecting the new node with. So for example, in this case, we have B and C, we have B as the nearest neighbor, so a connection is already made. But now we're going to look at the distance between um, the next neighbor and the already connected um, nodes. So for example, if you look at C, we see that XC is greater than the already connected node B and then the distance between B and C. So because this is greater, no, um, no it is actually made. So then we look at D and again, BD is less than XD, so no connection is made. The same for E. Then we arrive at A and we see that XA is less than BA. So a connection is made. Now, what this ensures is that other regions are connected with the new node. So for example, in the previous case, if we wanted to go to A, we would have either suffered from early stopping or we would have had to traverse through the whole graph to get to A. So this directly um, improves the time efficiency. I'm going to talk about um, the influence of the construction parameters now. So for example, we've already talked about um, the formula of L that's an expansion, um, sorry, exponentially decaying probability distribution. So um, it's, um, yeah, so it's normalized by the non-zero multiplier ML. So what this um, formula essentially does is it gives ML the power. So if ML is a large value, then the probability of L being a large value highly increases. And if ML is a smaller value, it decreases. Now, as you can probably guess, if we're choosing small L as a higher value, that increases the overlapping between layers and nodes. And this leads to more traversing of um, each layer, and it leads to a, a decrease in time efficiency, essentially. So we need the value of L to be such that it's as low as possible, but also it, you know, we don't want all the layers to be, all the nodes to be on layer zero. So we need to take into account the value of ML that we're going to choose. So in the paper, they suggest the value of ML being one over logarithmic of M, which as you can see from the graphs that I've um, taken from the paper directly, that it gives a good time efficiency. The query time is relatively less on all circumstances and all situations that they've discussed here. The next construction parameter that they've discussed is capital M, which is if you remember the number of connections we're going to make with each new node. So um, we need to consider that if, for example, there are, you know, if we increase the value of M, then um, there's a lot of neighbors that we need to search them. So we need to consider that smaller values of M tend to be better for lower recalls or low dimensional data, and higher values of M are suited for better, uh, so better for high recalls and high dimensional data. So through experiments, they said a reasonable range from five to 48. The next parameter is M max, which if you recall is the maximum, um, the maximum um, connections in each layer. So M max, uh, they've, through experimentation, they've actually um, set the order select value to two into M. And as you can see from this graph, it gives uh, a reasonable, a reasonably good query time. So, next construction parameter is EF construction. So, higher values of EF construction do give a more profound result, but it also requires more computation. 
So they've um, recommended the value to be between 0 0.95 to 1. And the log uh, complexity analysis, uh, as you can probably guess, this is very closer to linked list. So it has a similar um, complexity, which is log n of search. Uh, as for the insertion process, it's very similar to the search process if we're doing one load insertion, so it's still log n. But if we're doing n load n node insertions, then it becomes n log n. The memory cost depends on the number of connections made. So uh, that's where m max and m max zero uh, plays a role. So m max zero is the zero layer. Um, m max is determined by m l. So the number of layers that we're actually going to use. So that's that leads us to this. Um, formula right here, that's also mentioned in the paper. Yeah, and that leads me to the end of this um, presentation. If you guys have any questions, you can leave them in the comments and I'll answer them as soon as I read them. One other thing that I want to mention is that this approach can be used in um, collaboration with other approaches, such as the product, quant product quantization, so we can use the Vernoid um, centroids and map them in such a graph so we can you know, reach the uh, centroid that is to interest to us fairly quicker than the normal method. So there are approaches you can take towards this and happy exploring towards that. But this leads me to the end of this presentation. Thank you. <laughs>